And uh, Pastor Sam D had some kind words for me. And so I thank him for that, but uh, I, I value his friendship as well. And uh, always so honored to come and to worship with New Life Fellowship. And, and I, I love this guy too. <laughs> so I love so we've been worshiping in song, now we're going to worship in word. So I hope that you have your Bibles today, whether on your phone or in a copy of God's Word. And today we're going to be in the book of Luke, chapter 5. We're going to look at verses 4 through 6. It's a small group of verses, but I really believe in these verses is something that can change our lives. That God is, God's word is powerful. Amen? And so let's read uh, these verses all together. Not all together, but as a whole. All right. So um, let's start in Luke chapter 5, verses 4 through 6. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep, and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. បាទខ្ញុំអានជូនលោកកាជាពុកទី <laughs> So this section that we just read is from the book of Luke. It's a letter written by a man by the name of Luke. And if you're brand new to church, then this is um, a gospel that was written about the life of Jesus. And and Jesus is interacting here with a man by the name of Peter. Now, as you many of you know, Peter goes on to become one of Jesus' disciples. And but what we just read really is an encounter Peter has with Jesus before this happens. And so we see that Jesus is teaching. He's by the water. He's teaching a multitude of crowd, a, a large crowd. This is not the first time that Jesus has met, uh, that Peter has met Jesus. He's heard him speak before. He's seen him in the distance. Uh, Jesus' fame is growing. His ministry is beginning. And Jesus now is beginning to call his disciples. And here we see this encounter with Peter. And we see in this small group of verses that Jesus asked Peter to do something. And in the middle of these verses, we see Peter begin to experience something. Right in the middle, Peter is faced with a question. Jesus asked him to do something and it creates some tension in his life. It reminds me of when I came to faith in Christ. 
Way back in 1999, <laughs> some of you weren't even born then. <laughs> I'm just an old guy, right? <laughs> but in 1999, I came to faith in Christ. God had been after my heart and been convicting me. What's interesting is I came to faith in Christ in the Middle East. As a matter of fact, it was in the country of Azerbaijan. Good, good luck. <laughs> Azerbaijan, Azerbaijan. And so I tell you that story because uh, God was really calling me and I felt this call on my life. And I came to faith in Christ. I said yes to Jesus. And it was the best decision I've ever made in my life. And I'm here to tell you that from that day forward, my life has been perfect. I've never had any problems. I've never had any struggles. Do you believe that? No, you don't believe that. That's not true. Although my life became eternally better, and God saved me and gave me a joy in that moment. Can I just be honest with you? In some ways, my life became more difficult. You see, before coming to faith in Christ, I just, I just lived for me. Now, that didn't turn out well for me. But as I came to faith in Christ, there was a tension now inside of my heart. Because I wanted to follow Jesus. I wanted to be his disciple. I wanted to be a good father and a good husband. But the, the truth is, is that there'd be times where I would do that. <laughs> and other, other times I would struggle. And the reality is, is that there was this tension between my head and my heart. But here's the good news. That in this story, we see Peter facing the same decision. We see Jesus calling Peter to do something. And Peter, just like all of us, has a moment of decision. And so let's look at this story of Peter and his life. And let's look and talk about how do we manage this tension between our head and our heart. What can we learn from this story today that will help us to live the Christian life? And here's what I will tell you today. Is that if we apply what we learn today? That you can leave this place in a, in a different way. God could do something in your heart tonight that will change your life forever. And so how do we manage this tension between our head and our heart? Well, the first thing we see is that many times um, what God is doing in our lives is kind of small. You see, in our story, Peter is sitting there mending his nets, listening to Jesus. 
And Jesus is now at the edge of the of the lake there so he can speak to the crowd. And it says that when Jesus quit speaking, he turns and he speaks to Peter. And he makes a request of Peter. You see, sometimes as Christians, we are maybe even fearful that God's going to make a request of our life. We think that maybe if I follow Jesus, he's going to ask me to go live in Africa or do something that, that seems kind of scary. The truth is, he, he might do that. But my experience is, is that most of the time, God speaks in a small voice. You see, Jesus makes a request of Peter that's really not that out of the ordinary. He says to him, he says, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. He's asking a fisherman to go fishing. That doesn't seem that hard, does it? But what is he doing? He's talking to a fisherman that knows how to fish. And every good fisherman knows in this time that you fished at night. And so Jesus says, hey Peter, push out again. Let's go fishing. So you can just imagine, what is, what is Peter thinking in this moment? Well, we don't have to wonder because we see in the second part of uh, verse 5, it says, But Simon Peter answered to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Peter is looking at Jesus saying, this doesn't make any sense. We just came in from fishing. We caught nothing. And so in this moment, Peter is caught with a decision. He could say to Jesus, preacher, you, you stick with preaching and I'll stick with fishing. Because Peter was tired, right? I'm sure he had things to do. His wife probably wanted him to pick up some things on the way home. And so in this moment, Peter is now in the middle of a decision. And this is the tension that we're talking about. See, the logical choice for Peter here is to say no to Jesus. I'm a fisherman. I know that I haven't been catching fish. It would have been very easy for him just to say no and go home. So, so I want you to think about how important this moment is in the life of Peter. What he says next will literally change his destiny. How he answers Jesus will determine if he goes this way in his life or this way in his life. How he answers Jesus will determine what he experiences in his life, what he will see. It will determine the influence and what his impact would be on humanity. And so in this moment, Peter's mind says, we've been fishing, we've caught nothing. 
นักขนมยำเชียร์ท่านนักขนมลองเต้นนังลงเปโตรกระทายยังเดินซานมาโยไปออดเมียน But he'd been listening to Jesus. He'd been listening to his teachings. He'd heard about and maybe even seen the miracles. And God was doing something in his heart. Because the logical thing to do was to say no. Didn't make sense. But by faith, he he says this word. And I love this English word. The word is nevertheless. It means in spite of everything I know, I'm going to do something else. He says we've been fishing all night. He said, but nevertheless, he said, he says these powerful words. He says, at your word. He says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down my nets. In this moment, he. He trusts Jesus. He follows his heart. So let me ask you: Think about what would have happened in Peter's life if he had said no. All the things he would have missed. All the things he would have missed. But Peter says yes to Jesus. He He makes that decision by faith. And so, because of this, he gets to experience some amazing things. In Matthew chapter 14, we read that Peter gets out of a boat. He begins to walk on water. Well, at least for a little while. A little bit. That's amazing, right? Peter walks on water. And then we see in Matthew chapter 16 that Peter confesses Jesus as Lord. He begins to believe by faith in Jesus Christ. And we see later in that chapter that Jesus then says that Peter will be the foundation of the church. These are amazing mountain top experiences in Peter's life. And so. Peter got it right all the time, right? He didn't. Just like we don't. You, you see that tension between my head and my heart exists in my entire life. Every single day, God is calling us to follow Him, to obey Him. And so, the story of Peter is an encouragement because sometimes he didn't get it right. And so, since we have an English week coming up next week here at your church, Uh, I want to teach you an English phrase that talks about when you don't get it right. Right. I I need you to participate. All right, so when someone in in America does something foolish, they make a wrong decision. Maybe even a stupid decision. Or 
We'll look at them and we'll say this. We'll say, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. You gotta, and you got to make this face. Come on, man. So I want, I want you to try it. So one, two, three. Come on, man. Come yeah, what about you guys over here? C- come on, man. Come on. Pastor Sandy, come on. Come on, man. Come on, man. Right here. Come on, man. Come on, man. What about you guys? Come on, man. Peter had some come on, man moments. Hey, look, Petro, what man? Me and Korea, what they got? Me and come on, man. I mean, Peter had some mountaintop experiences. Where he followed his heart. But Peter also had some moments where he let his head guide him instead of his heart. So let me just give you a couple examples. In Matthew 16. Right after Jesus has declared he's the foundation, going to be the foundational rock of the church. Peter rebukes Jesus. Rebukes. He rebukes Jesus, yeah. And Jesus says, Get behind me, Satan. And in that, come on, man, come on. Come on, man. Come on. <laughs> so Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. And we would all say, come on, man. Come on, come on. Come on Peter, what are you thinking? Come on, come on. Peter, what are you yeah. yeah, and so listen, he did that, and then um, in Matthew chapter 17, Peter, James, and John get invited by Jesus to on the Mount of Transfiguration. It says that Jesus revealed himself; he he became white as snow. Rather than Peter just being quiet and worshiping, he begins to speak. He comes up with a suggestion to do some things. And right in the middle of that, God shushes him. Be quiet. In other words, God is saying, Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, come on, Peter. What are you you thinking? And then we know that that Jesus invites the disciples to to go and to pray with him in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Peter falls asleep. Come on, man. Can't you stay awake? Jesus says, Come on, man. Come on. Can't you, can't you stay awake and pray? And then we know that Peter denies Jesus three times. That's definitely a come on, man moment, right? You see, Peter didn't do it perfect all the time, did he? As a matter of fact, can you imagine how Peter felt when Jesus was crucified? Having denied Jesus, the one he loves, in front of him. In his own mind, he must have been saying, Come on, man. What's wrong? Come on, man. We know this is true because Peter stops being a disciple. And he goes back to the very thing that he used to be. He starts fishing again. 
And in his mind, he had done too much. That tension between his head and his heart, now his head is saying, there's no way Jesus could love me. And but in John chapter 21 we see that the, uh, Peter and the other disciples are fishing and Jesus is on the shore he's built, he has some food and he's fishing a fire he calls out to the disciples Peter sees him Peter jumps out of the boat and you can just imagine as he comes and sees the risen Savior and in John chapter 21 we see that Jesus puts his arm around Peter and three times he asked Peter do you love me Peter responds you know I love you and Jesus puts his arm around him and he says come on man come on he reinstates Peter to the man that he would become you see as we look at the life of Peter it's a lot like us God's not doesn't ask us to be perfect it's through the the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus that we have a relationship with God. And that even after we come to faith in Christ, God knows that we're not going to do it perfect. And that's why God's salvation is a free gift of grace. Because the reality is, some of you are here tonight, you're just saying, come on, man. There's no way God loves me. I've done too much. I, I've got nothing to offer. But back into our story, we see that when Peter makes this decision, says that when he had done this, thrown the net back out, says that they caught a great number of fish and that their net was breaking. You see, when we are listening and we know that God is speaking, and He's always speaking, He's speaking into our everyday lives. It's usually just a small, still voice. And He's calling you to do something. And in that moment, we have a decision just like Peter. We can go with our head and our logic and what we think to be true. Or we can say, God, at your word. Despite what doesn't make sense, nevertheless, I'm going to believe. I'm going to take a step with you Jesus even when it doesn't make sense and in doing so we get to experience the power of God in our lives Peter got to see his very first miracle where the fish come up and in that moment Jesus puts his arm around Peter Peter falls to his knees to worship Jesus in that moment and I could just see Jesus lifting Peter up 
The Bible tells us that he tells Peter, he says, No longer will you fish for fish. He said, But you will fish for men. He's speaking the destiny of Peter. Jesus knowing full well all of the come on man moments Peter was going to have he knew that his grace was sufficient in every single one of those instances so that Peter would become the man that Jesus was calling him to be and I can just imagine that Peter thought back to that moment many times and thought about in that moment he could have made either decision and even on the toughest days don't you know he was glad he said nevertheless I will do what you asked me to do Jesus <coughs> So what does this mean for us today? In a room this size and we all have things going on in our lives. What does it mean that we, in this moment, that God might be doing a work in our lives? So what, what, what can it mean for us today? So maybe some of you are in a relationship right now that is not going well. Maybe it's a marriage that you, in your mind, your mind tells you it's not going to work. All of your circumstances and everything tells you it's, it's not going to make it. Can I tell you today, tonight that you can say, nevertheless, God, I'm going to trust you. God, I'm going to move forward in faith. Maybe some of you have a child here that you just, he's far from the Lord. A child, yeah, that's far from the Lord. Maybe they're into things that uh, you know are hurting them and you're, you're so concerned for them. Your heart, I mean your mind tells you that they cannot be reached. But I'm telling you tonight, you can say, God, nevertheless, I'm going to believe by faith. And I'm never going to give up on them. And I will pray for them. And God, I'm asking you to do a miracle in their life. Maybe some of you, it's a financial situation. And your, your circumstances and your mind says, there's no way this is going to work. Tonight you can say, God, I'm going to not think with my head. I'm not going to use my head to follow it. I'm going to follow my heart. I'm going to say, nevertheless, God, I'm going to trust you even in my finances. But maybe tonight there's some here who God's been calling to your heart. I know what that's like. I know that, that feeling that there's something missing. That tension in my head of like what I believe about God and my heart saying I need what, what God's saying I need. Can I tell you tonight that you could make that decision to say nevertheless, if, even though I don't know everything. But Jesus tonight, I'm going to take a step towards you. And I'm going to put my faith and trust in you. Because 
begin to follow you. So I don't know what it is for you tonight. Maybe some of you, it's a ministry opportunity. Maybe God's been laying on your heart that you need to step in and begin to serve someone. And you think to yourself, I, logically, I, I don't know what I have to offer. You've convinced, you convinced yourself that you have no talent. You have nothing to give God. Would I just encourage you tonight to say, nevertheless, Father, I'm going to move forward and make that decision. Maybe God's given you a, 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 a dream, a vision in your heart that He wants you to accomplish. Can I tell you tonight that you can turn to God and say, it makes no sense, but tonight I trust you. So tonight can be this opportunity where you declare that tonight's the night you're going to say, nevertheless, and whether it be to pray for a marriage or uh, children or a relationship and you just get before God and say I'm turning it over to you and I'm believing by faith you can do a miracle maybe tonight you don't know Christ and you want to come and Talk to somebody, pray with me, or Pastor Samdi, or, or just come and pray to, to, your, uh, to Jesus and invite him into your heart. Tonight can be a night that you step into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And say, nevertheless, from this day forward, I will follow you. So I'm going to pray and then when I'm done that'll be your opportunity to respond and so let's, let's pray so Father we thank you for your word we thank you for um, the story of Peter and how we can relate to how he got it right and sometimes he didn't get it right. Father, none of us are perfect. But you are, you are perfect. And so Father, tonight, help us to, to increase our faith. Father, I pray that many tonight will make a breakthrough in their life and begin to say, nevertheless, I will follow you. In spite of my circumstances, I'm going to say, nevertheless, I will believe by faith. And tonight I want to commit to you, Father, that I am going to live with that truth in my heart. And so Father, I pray for every single person here that you'll do the work in our hearts that you need to do. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 ហើយខ្ញុំសង្គមថាព្រះបន្ទូលនៅថ្ងៃនេះពិតជាលើកទឹកចិត្តនឹងផ្ដល់កម្លាំងទៅដល់លោកអ្នកបងប្អូនអស